Hello and welcome back to what is the 20th instalment in our factory building code along um, in the Unwind Engine 5.2. Um, hopefully most of this, I believe, um, is workable in most previous versions of Unreal to a certain extent I would guess, but at least five I would say, um, five onwards, um, possibly even in four point whatever. Um, 4.27 or whatever um, because we've not used anything I don't think specific to 5 as such um, correct me if I'm wrong um, put it in the comments if, it, if, if you've tried and there's something you're missing maybe we can try and find a workaround if it's just something simple you know we'll go from there so anyway we have our rather looking strange looking minor uh, it is very odd but there we go we've put it in the range um, for this time being i'm not going to take into account the uh range from the center to do with the purity uh, or anything like that there's going to be no modifier that's at the moment that, that might change later on but it's not a very big area so as long as you're in this spot i think it, you know we can say that that's fine yeah so let's open our minor base um okay so we've now detected that we're in range of a resource now let's see what happens if we move that out just just to make sure that this is working let's move that outside of that range and hit play nearly killed myself um if i hit shift f1 hit the small minor and it doesn't have a resource node fantastic now i don't know if i can change its x position on here will it let me there we go um a bit closer there we go and so let me select it but it's actually not actually updating is it um it's allowed me to select it if i wanted to let me just walk around no but obviously we, we, the, most of this detection is going to actually happen on building and we're going to have to modify our building script to account for objects that need resource nodes um so yeah we're gonna have to go from there and check those out um let me just come out of there i'm pretty sure that this won't be showing up even though it's not showing up there i would have thought as it was on event tick let's have a look um here let's have a look and hit f9 and hit play again and Let's step in. Oh, it steps in, but it's not actually checking the resource now. Let's go inside here and not in scope. Let's let's hit F9 on this one. Just a little bit of debugging. What have we got? Oh, we're not getting we're not getting any overlapping actors for some reason. Which is rather strange rather rather strange um yeah surprised at that because it's uh the length is zero i wonder why that is when we've as we've just moved it it seemed to work on spawn didn't it when we first put it in there um and we can prove that by moving it in hit and play again and then let's get rid of that by hitting f9 and oh maybe not hold on it may have already gotten past that point but let's have a look okay so let's select that minor oh it has selected it just didn't show there maybe it was a tick or two ahead of what we needed to look at so yeah okay this is now detecting that's fine because it's going to be on build anyway so it's going to be its initial location um we'll have to see if that causes any issues later on i don't think it will i'm quite surprised because it was done on tick um that's not picking it up mm, maybe because i didn't do a sweep as i moved so it didn't detect because i moved it by hand rather than using code very much possibility but it shouldn't never move 
unless it's a mobile one, but that one will have different clothing whatsoever to detect a resource node. Um, it will constantly be working on it. So, but this is a static, not an issue. Okay, so our miner. What else do we need now, miner? So, the efficient, efficient, efficiency. Let's get my words out. Efficiency rate is actually going to be a calculated rate because there are going to be a number of factors based on this. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to put a mining head in, but there will be a drill and it will be a new blueprint actor and that will be put in and uh, no to be honest no i will put that in maybe not this episode maybe the next one yeah let's just get the miner working right so we have the resource we know where the node is so we know we're on it let's do some calculating so i'm going to complete complete the tick um on how are we going to do this? so we're going to do this per second yeah, I think we're going to do it per second, but we're going to base it on 60 frames per second. So we're going to have an update every 0.6 of a frame. Um, there's not going to be a lot of code running, so I don't think it'll impact us too much. So to make this tick right, we're going to get this roughly tick every tick, 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 I keep saying, um, every uh, 60 frames. Now, this shouldn't be an issue for most people. Um, not unless you're getting some really really low frames per second but if you don't overpower your graphics you should be fine um but it doesn't matter what frame rate you use we can set the tick interval here and the actual value is something like 0.1667 i think otherwise it's one point it's 0.166 recurring i think but it's something like 1667 is accurate enough um, and we could devise that by in the tick section in seconds we can 60 divided by um no one divided by 60 so one second divided by 60 there we go so there is the position there so 0 0.01 not 166 it's 0 0.01667 okay so that's how often this will now tick okay now again people are going to say oh you shouldn't be using on tick of course you can use on tick please stop telling people to not use on tick on tick is only bad if you overpower it you don't want too many you don't want too intense of a code on tick events um which i get um but you, you've got to watch because if you want something to happen quickly and accurately then calling a timer say more than i don't know about 10 times per second it starts to add more overheads i believe um i might be wrong on that but i believe it adds more overheads i think you start losing the benefit once you start ticking too fast using timers too fast um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this tick interval so that every 60 frames um sorry every, yeah 60 times per second it will generate a tick event okay now you might have 240 frames a second on your on your game it doesn't matter this will still fire at that interval which makes it pretty good for you know getting a bit more accuracy with your math here so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be basing these on every second so the the resources we grab are per second yeah so we can start but we can do a bit of accuracy and start adding them up every 60 frames a second now if it gets too intense intensive we can change the math a little bit and we could do it every 30 times a second or i don't know i don't know Let, let's let's do this a little bit more accuracy yeah let's do this every 10 times a second yeah so every 0 0.1 of a second it's going to tick so that's 10 times a second yeah i think that might be good enough so our, our miner will update that often now what we've got to watch is um any control that we do for animations will also be affected by this okay if you start using a tick rate um 
or the on tick event for your objects now we can get around this um in general by having each object have its own tick um rather than having one for the default minor class so or we can just increase the tick amount or we can just turn off the limiter and just let it go every frame but we've got to take into account our resource rates in some form um which is easy enough because we can use um the delta seconds that the tick produces so when you come into the event tick you've got the delta seconds yeah so the delta seconds um allows us to figure out a more accurate version of your event tick so you can you can time your calculations uh, but for now i'm going to actually set the actual object to every tenth of a second which which will works fine for us uh, for now but we'll <laughs> we'll look into that later and see if we get any juddering if we start doing any animations with it but yeah um okay actually i'm going to change my mind let's do let's let's put this back to zero okay let's leave the tick on because then it won't cause any complications later on um what we're going to do is we're going to use delta seconds so delta seconds is basically it gives you an exact value of how many seconds have passed since the last frame and obviously this can change from frame to frame depending on how intense the game is um so to get a perfect amount all we have to do is we can take our value per second and divide it or times it sorry by this value um so if we times it so if it's 0.5 it'll give us half the value yeah so if we time if this is two seconds it will give us twice the value so we'll always get the correct value based on how long it took between these seconds so we know that we're going to get um let's just let's just try this out and i'll show you what it means so so you can understand it a little bit so um this get for resource node um i might need to move this to the end a bit rather than mess about dragging up extra nodes so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a function first and we're going to call this um just mine because that's what it's going to do this is what's happening when it's mining okay um all we need to do now is also have um do we have an activated in this i think we do let's just go back to uh class default sorry and have we got an activated do, 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 do. we should have because i think everything does have oh no it doesn't in the base configuration hmm maybe we should put that in the base that the building is activated because obviously a lot of these buildings you know it might not matter on some but i think if we have it there on most of them um yeah let's change it so if we if we click edit here this will edit the base class yeah and we're going to put in here um an activated now we've got to be careful because we've got one in the generator as well um so yeah i'm going to put it in here so let's let's have a look so where can we put it in it won't be in any of those so let's let's call this um and we'll call it is activated for now for want of a better name in case you have to change anything and it will be a boolean value and it will be false by default um And then this will be in the section. Um, what can we sort of this configuration? Just call it control, maybe. Yeah. Let's compile and save that. Okay. So if we go back into our mining base, we now should have um, an activated 
section under control there we go is activated so in the tick event event tick we're going to check if the building is activated so the best way to do that is find our well we can't can we so get is activated it's not in the list on the left is it because it's a base class variable and we're going to go branch and plug that into there um, regardless of what happens that is going to run anyway so that should come off both now should I put this in the function should I call the function and check let me think should I check inside the function? I'm not sure, but let's just add, click on the function, and we need to add in an input. And we need to pass this delta time. Okay, and it's a float value. And it's a float value, I have to tell it twice. Okay, yeah, we can do the check inside here actually. So let's do the check inside of here. So let's get rid of this, well, I'll copy it so cut it sorry con x oh what am I doing and it into there and control v there we go so first thing we're going to do is we don't care about this every tick we only want to check this oh no no that's fine we'll just check it every tick because obviously if it's on it's on if it's not it's not so now we're checking if it's activated that and that just eliminates any problems um on the event tick here we can just drag in that to there and then from there to there okay and we just need this delta seconds there okay so every frame this is going to update but it's only going to update by the amount that we set it so let's just see how this will work we're probably going to hard code a value for now just to show it working um so if we say the efficiency rate is one so that's one every second yeah and then we can show this working and it should go up roughly once every second even though it's being called on every frame so we'll show that now let's go back into our mine so all we do is set this by delta time multiplied by our efficiency rate okay so what this is doing now is it's taking our efficiency rate which is one one per second this is just hard coded for now this won't be how it will be but I'm just showing you how this works so every second it's adding one times by how many seconds it took per frame so if it took 0 0.001 per frame this will add 0 0.001 to the resource count so that we should then see as it goes um, the resource count going up by roughly one per second so let's just hope I don't prove myself wrong now right, let's start this let's click on the miner and at the moment we've got no resource count because we're not activated let's, uh, let's bring this up a little bit let's just activate it oh problemo Yes, stupid problem. Okay. I'm setting it, but I also need to add it, don't I? <laughs> I need to add it onto itself. So, current resource count. Um, add. Let's put this up here. This. And this. Okay. There we go. So what this does, it multiplies it and then adds it onto the current count. Yeah. Let's try this again. So minor 
we've got zero miners uh, resources let's activate it one two three four so as you can see it's going up roughly one every second which well not roughly it's pretty darn good actually um pretty accurate obviously if you get some frame stretches you might find this jumping but that's just part of a game anyway it will still get those values once it catches up with itself so that's just proving that we can now get x amount of resource exactly correct per second by using our uh, efficiency rate so how are we going to set our efficiency rate now it's set to one at the moment which isn't a problem so in here we're going to set that efficiency rate and that efficiency rate is going to be set possibly just once i don't think i want to really be setting it all the time um see this is a, an, a different thing no it's going to have to be checked all the time because if the drill moves it's going to have to check all the time so yeah okay so how are we going to calculate our efficiency well okay so what we want is some more variables so we want current drill depth okay and that one's going to be a float value and this we're going to be in um hmm, current drill depth is hmm, what section could that be status yeah status the current drill depth okay now i'm not taking into account the um i'm not going to take into account any sort of drill changes because we're not actually building the drill yet this is just one of those um variables for now that we're just going to take all drills are going to go at this covenant at the same speed yeah so we also need to add in a variable called drill um depth speed now there's going to be a lot more factors involved in this but at the moment i'm going to let this go at hmm, how much can we let this go at how far do we want it to dig per second so to, to test it to show you it working i don't want to be waiting a long time so we're going to say it can go 50 meters per second yeah and that's going to be in um config yeah so this is status we'll call that status that's cool that's in the right place and the efficiency rate is going to be config yeah so we're going to leave the efficient efficiency rate in there but we can start calculating things on these now i want to view these values for now that's why i keep switching all these on i want to be able to view them in the editor that's all um so we can keep a track on how things are working so we need a new function called calculate current let's see oh, okay. oh i've still done it wrong look at this i'm terrible i'm terrible can't even spell english my primary language and i can't even spell my only language to be honest so I, I was never good at foreign language i can do certain amounts of french and spanish but that's about it it's shameful really should know more right um so the current efficiency what are the factors with the current efficiency well the current efficiency is going to be we're going to get the current deal low deal drip okay so what we need to do is we need to get the resource node so here it is there let's get that so that's important the current resource node we've got um is going to contain all the values so if we go get um i can't remember what we call this dun, dun, dun. that's physics it's nothing to do with that get mining range get all range modifier there we go 
or range modifier. Okay. So we have a bunch of arrays in here. Yeah. And we need to check against them. So to do that, we need to, for each loop, I'm going to put it with a break. And you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to loop through them and we're going to check that the current depth of the drill matches in with these so we're going to go here and we're going to break the quality okay and we also need to do a check on this so we're going to do a compare float Okay. Actually, no. It's not in. It's not compare. So I want to do two compares. Do I? What I want to do is an in range um, float. There we go. It's a useful little node. <laughs> we want it inclusive. So start range is our minimum. End range is our maximum. Yeah. So. Our value is going to be the current drill depth. So now we have a way of checking these values. And it basically comes out with uh, a Boolean value, which all we need to do is come off and branch. There we go. And all we're going to need then is to set the efficiency and break. Okay. So if it's false, it will fall off the end and we'll check the next one. Um, as long as it's not minus one, that is. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if there is a, a check on this max value. Um, might have to put one in there for the last one because it's going to have that minus one value um actually no i don't think we need the maximum the, the minus one value do we we will change that we won't use the minus one value um it'll be the last one so the efficiency will basically be zero but what we're going to do is we're going to set a local variable and we'll call that the output efficiency yeah as a float so that will be zero when we enter in and it will be set here so if it's true we will set it yeah then what happens is once it's true we come to break so come out of here we'll go to break okay because we've already found our range it matches we don't want to keep searching because we've already found it and so we're going to break but what happens is on the break it actually allows it still comes out of this completed yeah so now we can just return our value so we need to set current efficiency rate we need an output yeah and this output is going to be out uh, we'll just call it efficiency efficiency and it's a float efficiency oh god you terrible excuse my french see what i mean i'm absolutely useless at foreign languages i'm not trying to take the mickey out of anyone i'm actually actually taking the mickey out of myself it is very terrible trade terrible right bring that return node out so that will be set either zero or the value we set in the range yeah um so the output efficiency comes out and that's set by the modifier okay so 
so there we go but we also need to take into account um, the ore purity don't we we have not actually set any of that up have we I'm not sure if we have let's just have a look um, let's have a look at our node did we set up a purity normal quality okay so what we need to do is set up a value that normal quality matches up to yeah um, we need to get that and make a key pair um, at the moment let's just hard code it yeah at the moment we'll just hard code it and then we'll we'll go from there let's just hard code it for now i don't want to drag this out too long by putting too much detail in so we set our output efficiency and just come along there we're now going to hard code it with a switch so we want to switch on e purity was it resource purity there we go so for now we're just going to hard code these values but that's not how i want to do this at all so bear in mind this will change okay so the resource purity needs to come through which is from the resource node so we'll come here get resource node get purity there we go and plug that into there so there we go our resource nodes purity so all we're going to do is multiply this value by each one so we will say um, set put efficiency they're all going to have the same now let's let's put it in here actually let's add an extra variable just to make this easier um let's see modifier yeah okay that's going to be set to zero so we're going to set that instead okay <laughs> that didn't quite work drag that in there delete this one out for now and then we're just going to bring that one out to all of these yeah so depending on which one it is and so say we're going to say let's let's use kind of a satisfactory level thing so we've got 30 60 120 okay and that then is going to be by our output efficiency based on our drill depth yeah which we're doing up there so all we need to do is multiply so there's the multiply node and we need to do that by each one so and I don't know if we can get I think I might be able to get these no I can't can I no I can't I'm gonna to have to do these one by one which is is a shame um, we still have to set the, the, the output efficiency aren't we so let's set output efficiency and it will be multiply oh no we don't no we don't all these will go to set output efficiency and we won't come off these so all of these will go into here yeah and then all we do is let's make some more room a little bit let's bring this across and we re-get the purity modifier so we've set it on depending on which one there because we can't grab them from there we re-get them and all we do is multiply and that so actually we don't need the set 
we can just always go straight into there. Yeah, remove the set and just go straight into there because we can do this straight onto the output. We don't need to set the variable and then put it onto the output because we've already got the two here. So what this does, it gets the purity. So if you can get 30 a second from a, a poor node and then your X amount deep, that will be your output efficiency and it will go into there. Yeah. Let's see how well that works. Now, I should be able to see the efficiency um, as I think I, yeah, I've made it instant at all. So let's run. And if I come to the minor and we have efficiency rate of one because we haven't started it yet. So activated. Ah, but we have a problem. It's not updating. Why is that not updating? Because we haven't told it to update. So we want to calculate efficiency into our mine. So the efficiency right here isn't actually what we're going to be setting, is it? So what we're going to do is set it in the uh, Sorry, using. Oop, <laughs> can't select any. Using our function, calculate efficiency. There we go. And that will be going there. So we might not need the efficiency rate. But what I'm going to do is because I want to view it, I am going to set it as well. Just so we can view it, so we can see. And obviously for reporting purposes. So we want to set efficiency rate to there yep let's bring that one out that one to there and bring that one to follow on there just make it nice and tidy it would have worked either way but that's so we can view it okay so now if we turn this one on activate okay oh what's going on well the problem is Nothing's happening because even though it's on, the drill's not moving. So that is working at the moment because we're hitting nothing. Yeah, and our current depth is nothing. So now we need to do is plunge the drill. So let's get to the minor base back in here. So during mine, so we want to plunge the drill and we're going to have to have a maximum drill depth in the config so max drill depth okay and that's going to be in config and if we compile that and we're going to say right this can probably do 1400 yeah this can go 1400 deep so this is a, a relatively um shallow depth say yeah maximum drill depth so what we will now do is we need to have some way of controlling it down into the ground so we need to set up another variable um that's called um target um drill depth a lot of this might get tidied up but for now we'll go with the flow and we're going to call this control right so that's our target drill depth we now need a bit of code that says right we need to send the drill down yeah and we're going to send it down until it reaches that depth if that depth exceeds the maximum depth it will stay at the maximum depth yeah so let's play with this now that's all going to be in this mine um so we calculate the current efficiency but we want to do that after we do all this i believe so let's move that across with the right arrow Oop. and there oh did i shut no i didn't <laughs> i thought i'd click something then i've seen the word android and i looked at all this oh did i do something so what I want to do now is I want to also now move the drill depth. 
yeah so we're going to do a similar sort of thing using delta time okay so we need to know we're calculating well, calculating the current efficiency using this what we want to do is move the drill so we're going to have a new function called move drill and we're going to need um, in here delta seconds okay now we know how far the drill can move per second yeah so we need to get that drill speed times it by the delta seconds okay so if we drag off here multiply and then drag in the uh, drill depth speed I forgot what I called it then for a brief seconds uh, well, just pop that under there it's what I normally do I don't know why I've not been doing it lately um, so we get the drill depth speed and we calculate it by delta seconds okay um, so we now need to move the drill so let's check if the drill is in the right position first because if it is we don't want to move it so let's move this across let's do a quick compare so we want to go compare no it's not an int whoops compare oh compare compare float there we go so we're going to compare our drill depth there we go current drill depth there um i have to bring this down because of the way it looks like it's going to clash doesn't it so current drill depth compared with the target drill depth okay so if the current drill depth is less than the current drill then we want to add it on so we want to then add so we want to add that much to the target drill depth um, no sorry not the, the the current drill depth all right so we add that on then we need to do a check so once that's done the current drill depth we add that on and then we add yes yeah, so we need to add that to here so we're not there to there there we go all right current drill depth now we're going to have to change this slightly because this is only going in the positive direction i just want to try and get a proof of concept working for you um so that we can show you the drill moving set current drill depth in fact again before we set it compare with um the maximum drill depth okay so come out of there so let's compare it okay so if it's larger um we want to set it as the same set it this the drill depth to be the same as this yep so once we've got our value we've added it on so if, it, any, if it's larger than the drill depth we do that if it's equal we don't do anything and if it's less um we add we use this so bring in the current drill depth again 
and then we bring in this one a little bit confusing again i'm sorry i will go, i'll go through back again in a second just to explain what what each stage is doing so yeah let's do that now so what it does it comes in and it compares the target drill depth with the target drill depth if it's less it will come along and then what it will do it will do a calculation based on the drill depth and it'll work out how much to move it in one frame by taking the speed times by the delta seconds that's how much that drill can move per frame to make it move per second if you get me but once we've done that we then need to add that to the current depth so that's how far down it's gone but then we need to check that it hasn't exceeded the maximum drill depth if it has it will be the maximum drill depth it will stay at the maximum drill depth it won't go any further if it's less it will set the new value so i'll add this onto it so that we know where we are yeah and that's all it's going to do so that's yeah so that's the move drill i had to think then what i was doing that's the move drill so we're coming to the mine and we want to move the drill so we need to add this in the middle there and again bring delta seconds in just so we can uh, keep track on it so delta seconds and delta seconds there we go so that will move the drill but there's no actual drill moving we could we can actually change that later on we can just base that on the drill depth um but the drill itself is not actually physically moving you're never going to see under the ground so it's just a kind of keeping tabs sort of thing so if we hit play on here let's just see let's select our minor and let's activate it and the current drill depth is zero. Oh, it's not moving did i add it into the right place um so that's mine did i add mine onto event tick yes i did okay what is going on i say what is going on um so move drill if it's less so let's just highlight that because we've got move drill in there we'll come in here and come out and move drill isn't being called have i not called it <laughs> have i done one of my usuals move drill let's just set the f9 off there for now don't want that on there have i not called move drill yeah we've called move drill and delta seconds so why is it not getting there okay it's not working it's coming here it's coming through um let's go into move drill oh target drill. ah there we go <laughs> I set this on purpose so that we can um, have a play. So now I wanted to set the drill depth. Current drill depth. Have I not put it as? No, I don't think I've. Uh, I don't think I've put it as viewable. So current drill depth. Target drill depth. Yeah, there we go gonna make it instant editable so we can see it there we go so let's activate the drill so we can see nothing's happening when we activate the drill yeah and then we've got our control here there it is target drill that so i'm going to go to 200 as you can see the drill is moving towards the 200 and it stopped 0.301 that's a bit of a little bit more that's not too much but we're still not getting anything out of it let's let's move down to 600 so as you can see the drill is moving there we go but it's still not getting anything let's go to 700 oh and we're getting a resource 
And as you can see, we're probably getting about two every second. Let's go deeper. Go to 900. And then your efficiency rate's gone up again to 30. See, and that's going to put much quicker. Let's go down to 1200. And the efficiency rate is now up to 45. And it's going much quicker. Okay, so obviously those values there, they're, they're quite a fair bit. There's quite a lot coming out of there. I don't know if that's the sort of values I want. I'm not 100% sure. But um, yeah, that's just showing you now that this is mining at this efficiency rate. Yeah? Obviously now we've got to do the same code and go backwards. So what we need to do is figure out which way it goes so we'll do that now uh, so as you can see though we've got to a point um, where the drill will move to the assigned depth and it will work out its efficiency rate I know we've hard-coded the values for now and um, we've got a drill depth speed but that will change depending on, each on, on, on a drill head and on the miner and also there's so many different factors that we can actually put into this miner and it's going to be so configurable so we need to be careful on how we do it and uh, so we don't over complicate it we'll do it at a stage at a time but as you can see it's gaining resources yeah so what we need to do is also put a resource cap on the miner what's the maximum it can hold yeah so our efficiency is 60 there on the purest road, purest part of the node okay so if we come into here uh, where did we do our efficiency setting um, was it during mine or was it during there it was okay so as you can see it's popping out when it needs to it's doing all its code so it's a normal quality node which is maximum of 60 purity yeah because we're right bang in the middle of the node but we haven't set the efficiency rate of the actual drill yet now the efficiency rate of this drill is one um i want to actually tell it what the drill's efficiency rate is now and also the miner's efficiency rate so we can do that quite easily um the only thing i'm going to do right now though is i'm going to change that bit of code for moving the miner uh moving the drill sorry so just because we want it to be able to go up and down so what i'm going to do is shuffle this all aside okay so the first thing we need to do is what do we need to do we need to check if the target drill depth and the current drill depth which direction are they okay so best way to figure that so what we'll do is under control maybe um would you be in config i'd say config yeah we're going to call this um drill direction who oh. is that n off there direction okay now this is only going to be i'll just put one in there it's either going to be um a plus or a minus either one or minus one so let's figure this out so we'll do a compare first compare float i don't know why because compare image is a default one it's a bit of a weird one that um compare float and the input is going to be zero oh, so the input is going to be um the difference between the current drill depth yeah and compared with the target drill depth okay so what happens here is we then get a larger than or less than or equal to if it's equal to we don't do nothing if the drill current drill depth is larger than the target drill depth right we want to set the drill direction to minus so let's do that now let's 
add that in there I'm going to disconnect that for now because we are going to use this code but it's going to change us a little bit before we uh, before we do anything so both this one and this one are going to set which direction it's in so if the current drill depth is bigger than the target drill depth it needs to go backwards so that's minus one if the target drill depth so if the current drill depth is smaller than the target drill depth it's got to go up and if it's equal to nothing we don't want to do nothing because it doesn't want to move because we know where it is so now what we need to do is move it by whatever amount so we'll ignore this one delete that we then need to do the multiplier and let's bring that across so we're finding out how much it's allowed to move and then we add that to the current drill depth now if we add minus uh, adding minus deducts <laughs> so um and then we compare so if it's equal it does nothing again um if it's larger then oh this might need to change yeah this might need to change so at the moment let's let's ignore let's ignore this and let's just set the current drill depth yeah for now let's just do control on day on that and let's just make sure this works before we complicate it a little bit more both of these need to come out but don't connect these pins here to anything um it's getting it from this calculation yeah so this should let it work up and down yeah but we're not limited it okay so if we click on the minor and we activate it right and we're going to set the target drill depth to 100 as you can see but because we're not limited it it's not doing anything so if we now set this to zero oh it's not going back okay It's going way beyond it's going to go way beyond its depth anyway. It should stop actually getting a resource. We should go to zero. There we go. But the drill hasn't stopped going because <laughs> we haven't done any checks on it. But um, let me just set the current drill depth manually and just make sure it does reverse until we've done our checks. It won't do anything. So they set the current drill depth to 500, and then we want the target drill depth to be 100 oh it's not working i wonder if my mathematics is incorrect um oh we're not actually doing anything with these are we silly silly that is very silly isn't it okay so we need need to can we multiply these yeah we're going to multiply these by the drill direction so if we get the drill direction yeah that should now fix that problem i, I completely forgot to put the drill direction in nothing new there you know what i'm like you've been watching long enough you'll tell uh, <laughs> so target drill depth 200 so no it's not moving at all why is that current drill depth times it by drill direction okay um drill direction is one drill speed is one not in scope okay well, oh yeah sorry forget my own head let's turn it on 
let's switch the thing on there we go it's going up now let's go back to 100 and as you can see it's going back down there is a bit of an issue there though I don't know why it's getting stuck there then back to it's going down but it seems to be getting to an issue where it's stuck on the 99s let's go to oh some sort of checks going on some sort of checks going on <laughs> I don't know what it is but some sort of checks going on in there right we're not no we're not actually getting to that it's weird that is is it because it's jumping up and down possibly through this yeah okay so let's just get rid of that for now it's now moving we now need to check whether it's equal to or larger than so ah this is where it's going to come a little bit of a problem we might need two co-paths to check um yeah we are going to need two code paths because depending on the direction i need to do a check whether it's high or low and i don't want to do another compare just to get that when i've already got it there so we will basically duplicate that um this bit can all remain the same bring it down a little and it will go into there that's not a problem this one will now go into there okay so either way it will set the current drill depth yeah now what we need to do is compare so this is the minus direction so just compare Bear float and all D bear float. All right. So this is the negative. Yeah. So if we compare this with the maximum drill depth, yeah. And if we compare this one with the maximum drill depth as well see why there's two in a moment okay um so if it's going backwards and it's smaller then we just want to set the current drill depth to this otherwise we'll leave it alone yeah so the current drill depth will be set to the maximum drill depth if we try to go too low and then we do the same on this maximum drill depth is if it's larger we'll set it to that yeah so it should never now go um beyond those settings but we also need an, an extra an extra step on the negative um and that is to check that it never goes below zero now as we're going to be setting the code we could just block the user from putting less than zero in which in fact that's probably what we'll probably do yeah let's just leave this for now it shouldn't ever be and be able to change anything less than zero so as long as we block the user input to a minimum of zero then we shouldn't have any problems i'm just going to save all this off um so yeah this is going to be the end of this video now i'm just going to quickly test this is working because this, this is dragged on again long enough but we kind of have a working drill um and that's what the the focus of this one was going to be so let's activate it and we've got no efficiency rate we've not set the drill let's go to 200 and see what happens oh <laughs> i've set the wrong values see it's good job i checked these it's not the maximum drill depth we want it's the target drill depth isn't it <laughs> um I'm checking the maximum drill depth, but it's the target drill depth I want to be checking. Um, my apologies. No. Ooh. Crazy. 
what's going on let's delete that and delete that um, also we're going to set the, the maximum drill depth oh I'm setting that one then as well um, so that it never goes over so we, we just restrict the in, input based on this maximum drill depth here then it shouldn't ever go over so if we go to that Uh, just duplicate both of those and it shouldn't actually no we shouldn't actually need those we could just do that and then the same as that and that it's a rather useful little node there yeah <laughs> let's try this again yeah we as long as we limit the the player input we shouldn't have to do any more checks on that um it shouldn't actually cause any problems so yeah that looks good minor on activate it target drill depth is going to be 200 and off it goes there we go bang on 200 absolutely fantastic let's go to 300 yeah let's go to 20 there we go and the drill's moving might have to change this drill speed but i've only put it on fast so that i can show you it working let's get up to 750 that should be in range of um getting some ore out of here so it's getting down there this will be a lot slower because it's going to take time but as you can see we have an efficiency rate of 15 which is roughly by the looks of it probably two every second thereabouts and let's go to 900 and as you can see as it goes through each stage it changes here look so if I set that to 1199 as far as I'm aware that doesn't go into the next range yet yeah, so it's still on normal Oh no, it kind of did pick up the 60 though, didn't it? I don't get why. Oh, was it 1100 up? Let's try. I think that might have been. Oh, I've set the drill depth by hand, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. I've actually messed this up now, haven't I, by doing this? It's not working now. <laughs> what have I done? The current drill depth isn't changing. <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out. That. Oh, it's because I'm changing the maximum. Oh, geez. See, it's been a long day. 1099. There we go. 45 was the maximum 1099. It's 1100 to 1300. So we put 1300 in. No, I shouldn't be doing that, should I? Let's put that to 1300. And then it'll probably, yeah, there we go. We're not getting any more ore because we've gone past it. So that minus one actually isn't causing any issue. It's actually working. It is actually working. So if we bring the drill back down to 1299, just back it off a bit and we get our 60 back. Perfect. So we have a working drill. So it was a bit longer. Um, I hope you understand the maths on it. If you don't, I can always create a separate episode just just reiterating what those those maths uh, were, um, which I might just do anyway. I'll call it episode twenty point five or something like that, um, so that you can understand where we got that from. Um, because some people might not understand the math behind it even though i have explained it it doesn't always come across because i'm just typing things in on the screen sometimes actually seeing the maths written out might be a little bit better so i'll probably do that in the next episode as like a little mini episode just explaining the maths behind it okay so anyway i hope you enjoyed that i hope it's a bit a bit a bit like a little bit useful to you and again um 
maybe you've learned something maybe you haven't maybe it's give you some ideas of your own that you think are better great absolutely brilliant if you've got something better i would love to hear it put it in the comments i'd love to hear how you've done something different um that works even better um or it might just work different you know it might not be any better or worse it might just work different um but if it's more efficient you know great please share and then i could you know maybe do a recap video and say look this is what person x has just done one of our subscribers and he says that this works a bit more efficient so which is be fantastic because what you know i'm not perfect i'm doing this on the fly i'm not pre-thinking it i'm not preempting it i'm not doing any background work as such so this is all being done on the fly so it's what's on the top of my head tomorrow i might think oh i could have done that so much better but that's tomorrow and that's always after you've thought about it so yeah I'd love to hear more from you. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you full stop um, and let me know what you've done with this. So thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode yet again and we'll continue from there. Okay, thank you very much and bye-bye.